In this screencast, we're going to look at the case where we start out with an ideal gas in the tank on the left. The tank on the right is under vacuum. And the gas on the left is 1.5 bar, 404 Kelvin. Both tanks are insulated. The line between them is insulated. We open the valve, let the gas expand until the pressures are the same in both tanks, and then we close the valve. And then what we want to know is what's the temperature in each tank when those pressures equalize. And so the idea is that gas on the left is expanding, and it's pushing gas out, so essentially doing work on the other gas, so its temperature drops. And the gas on the right, we're compressing as we put gas into the container and we put more gas, we compress it. So we're essentially doing work on that gas. Its temperature increases. So we want to find the final temperatures. And the idea is that when we've equalized pressures, then we'll call it pressure 2 will be the same. This volume and this volume is the same. When there was so many moles, we started with one mole. When there was so many moles on the left, and N3 is number of moles on the right. And then this temperature is T2, and this temperature is T3, where T1 is our initial temperature. So P1 is 1.5 bar, and T1 is 404 Kelvin. And of course, N2 plus N3 equals one mole, since that's how many moles we start with. Now we can calculate the volume of the tank on the left just from the ideal gas law. I'll substitute in the numbers. I'll pause and do. So this is the volume of each tank. We can also apply the ideal gas law for after the expansion. So number of moles on the left, N2, temperature T2, pressure P2. And likewise, on the right side, number of moles in 3, temperature T3, but the same pressure P2. The next thing we want to do is apply an energy balance to the system. And it's a closed system, so the number of moles we start with times internal energy per mole should be the number of moles on the left times internal energy per mole on the left plus the number of moles on the right internal energy. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to write the internal energy as internal energy at a reference temperature plus CV times the temperature minus the reference temperature because we're always calculating changes. But I'm going to make life easy by saying the internal energy is zero when T is equal to T reference, and I'm going to make T reference zero. So then I can directly write this equation. U1 just becomes CV times T1, and likewise for U2 and U3. Well, the CV is actually canceled, so the temperature that we start with into T2 plus N3 T3. Now the, the part that makes this problem doable is to recognize that the gas in two, so let's look at at the start, let's look at and pretend we could isolate the gas that's going to finally be in the tank. For example, pretend like it's actually in a balloon and as we open the valve, this gas within the balloon expands and pushes against the gas above it. There's no real pressure difference between those two, no temperature difference. And so this gas within this dashed line is basically expanding reversibly and adiabatically. And that makes a big difference because then we can use the equations for ideal gas law, reversible adiabatic expansion that says T2 over T1 is equal to P2 over P1 raised to the power R over the heat capacity. Now, one thing we want to be careful about, this R is in joules per mole 
Kelvin, whereas the R up here is going to be ones that we used in the ideal gas law, right, it was in liter bar per moles Kelvin. A, a shortcut to separating and solving these equations individually as opposed to solving them all simultaneously is to realize that when we're finished the average temperature which is what this calculating weighted by moles the average temperature is the starting temperature 404 Kelvin so we have tank where we double the volume the average temperature is the same so the pressure must be half of the original pressure. So it's an important point that the pressure we can directly say is 0 0.75 bar because we know the average temperature and we know we've doubled the volume. Once we know that, we can substitute in this equation 404 Kelvin, 0 0.75 and the starting pressure 1.5 bar. R is 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin and heat capacity in the same units as given is 28. So we can solve this equation for the final temperature on the left. Indeed the temperature has dropped as we expect so this is one of our goals to solve for this temperature. Well if we know this temperature we can determine the number of moles on the left side from the ideal gas law. So the number of moles in two is pressure two, volume one over R, temperature two. And I'll substitute the numbers. I calculate as the number of moles on the left side, which means I can calculate the number of moles on the right side. And I'll substitute in the values here. And I calculate the temperature on the right side. It's higher than the starting temperature on the left side because we compress the gas as we expect it. Now we could have just solved this set of equations ideal gas law, adiabatic expansion, mass balance, energy balance using program. I'll show you here a polymath program for solving algebraic equations. So here's the polymath program and explanations of what the various terms are in the program and then on the right side here are the answers which are, fortunately are the same as what we calculated by our approach and so we can see as we expand the gas the gas on the left cools and the gas on the right is hotter than the starting temperature